Hello, everybody out there, and welcome, everybody, to another episode of Comic Book Weekly. And uh, it doesn't look like the it's usual. not a lot of us, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, for tonight's show, uh, let's introduce ourselves. You guys know me. I'm Mike at Dude Rock 18. To this side is Kat at Comic Uno. Hey, guys. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're sorry that... Um, that it's not a full cast. Um, we couldn't make it last week because of our schedules. And then this week was even worse. So me and Michael yeah. were like, we have to do a show because we canceled last minute last week. And it, everything was last minute. We really were like planning for at least three of us to be on. And then, you know, things happen. And then pretty much life, you know, life happened. Uh, and either you know jobs and then also chris wasn't feeling well so it yeah so we couldn't chris, have everybody yeah so chris dog Avenger won't be on because he's uh, not feeling well as well as mike spider slayer and brand last time press won't be on either so it's just gonna be me and cat we're calling ourselves tonight the new york duo squad and we got lots of stuff for you guys tonight we have uh news pieces which of course uh me and cat will be talking about and if you guys would like to leave us some questions, we'll be doing it. It's not even if you would like to. If you would like the show to go on, please leave <laughs> us questions because Michael um, didn't have any books this week. And I'm nope, not going to no do books. a top five if Michael doesn't have one, any books to talk about. I so, really had no books to read this week. Like, I'm looking through a list. I'm like, well, okay, no books this week. Well, this is upsetting because sometimes I like to read when I'm bored and uh, – not yeah, fun. It's, it's those type of weeks. And that's why we actually didn't do last week was because there wasn't a lot of books that came out. So right. we were just like, what's the point of doing a show if it's only going to be so little of us? And it's like, we're talking about one book. So we're like, let's skip next week. And now this is our detriment because we really should have skipped this week. And last week is <laughs> when we should have done the show. But uh, yeah, so what we're doing instead of our normal uh, format for this week, next week, whenever, you know, three or more of us are on next week, uh, we will have our uh, our regular show. It will be big books, everything. But since yeah. Michael didn't read his books, I'm not going to do a top five and just talk to myself. So I mean, if you uh, want to talk about the books you read, I mean, I uh, wouldn't mind. They could, watch my, they could watch my channel for that. Yeah, I did a whole entire, you know, my comic, you know, best comics of the week. If you want in detail reviews, go check out that video. Um, but if you have questions for specific books, that is the best thing for the Q and A. Um, you probably you guys know what we have in our pull list. If not, you can still talk about it. Um, please do not talk about death metal that came out today. Um, I am going to delete those comments because we do not spoil today's books. Uh, I don't read death yes, metal. No spoilers for that. Yeah. So please, nothing that came out this week of today. Um, everything is from last week, uh, last Wednesday, and last week's uh, DC books. So yes, and also. Uh I'm sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. off. Uh, we'll just want to throw out there that, uh, by the way, hi, everybody. Uh, the Media Jack has uh, donated to us $10. So thank you, the Media Jack, for that. Yes, and, thank you uh, so much. I was so surprised and excited to see that right before the show even started. Yes. So as we're talking about the news, you guys could ask us Q&A questions. Even if you have a question for me or Kat or anything, just let us know and we will get to those questions. But for right now, it is time for the news for this week. So Kat, what do we got for this week? All right. Uh, and please have you no more recommendations for this week's books. That also came out today, I believe, that disease. Yeah, we're talking so. about no... No, no today's, okay? Yes, Just, everything yeah. that came out last week for DC and, and Marvel. All right, let's get into some news, though. And we're going to start out with some comic news. And I got to take off Mike's news piece he was going to talk about. Okay, uh, let's talk about some Power Rangers. So we have the new Power Ranger titles that were released. And that is Mighty Morphin, it's called. We don't know uh, which characters are going to be in that. But it seems like it's going to be not just like Mighty Morphin characters. There are going to be new characters on this team. Very excited about that. And then also the Mega Rangers. So that is Trini and, and Zach and Jason. When they went off and made their own team, they uh, they made the Omega Rangers, and they're making separate books for this. Now, I'm curious if Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is still going to go on after this, or are these the two new books? Um, are we going to see Kimberly? Are we going to see uh, Tommy and all that? So, uh, yeah, 
I'm super excited. And Ryan Parrott is heading, I think, both these books. I love his writing and uh, love what he's doing for Power Rangers. So very excited about this. Yeah, the directions that they're doing from uh, the Power Rangers, like I like how they're doing like the off scenes, like what you were just saying about how Jason, Trini, and Zach about what they've been doing off the sidelines. And that's what actually gives us a greater explanation of what we didn't see on TV, but what we could have if the series kept going. I mean, my Wolf and Power Rangers series, from what I've been seeing and people reviewing about it, has been really like hitting the charts everywhere and it's been getting higher and really amazing reviews so i'm i mean i'm looking forward to actually maybe taking a look at the power rangers to see who is but tommy i hope he's in it because tommy was like the the uh whatchamacallit like uh, the potent member to keep the power rangers moving even though jason was it's like tommy as the extra member kept it going from mighty morphin to zeo and then a little bit maybe in Turbo into Dino Thunder. So he was like the main uh, essence of the importance in the Power Rangers group forming and being stronger, in my opinion. Yeah, um, I, I hope we get to see more Tommy. Uh, that'd be cool. I, I'm sure we will. He's Tommy. And I just wonder which book it's going to be. Or again, there's going to be three Power Rangers books. Um, we will find out San Diego at home. They're doing a Power Rangers panel. So I think they're going to give us a bit more information in that panel. So that is next week. So um, probably, I is it? Let me think. Yeah, it's next week. So I think two shows from now, we'll probably have information about that. I hope that, uh, so to answer uh, Peter Baker, is there separate chats or something? I feel like an idiot, oh, but I'm not Baker. actually sure which channel's hosting the chat. Oh, Paul, I'm sorry. Um, yes, so there are two channels that go on at the same time, which you could totally be in both chats if you like and watch it both channels. We have Mike's channel that brought broadcast this is comic book yeah. uh, corner 2.0. And then also comic frontline also broadcast this show. So it's actually right. two shows that are broadcasting at the same time. So that's actually a really great question. So I don't, I don't think we, we talk about that every show. I think like when we premiered comic book weekly, we discussed it. Sometimes, and that's about it. Yeah. But, but we, yeah. we usually mention it a couple of times just for new people and new viewers who are watching and uh, who come into the show we more or less uh, tend to do that. And what's up, uh, DNGN? Thank you for coming on, as well as everybody else who's here tonight. Thank you for coming. Really yeah, we appreciate actually, it. We have some questions from the people. So uh, Paul okay. Baker also asks if uh, either of you guys are reading Aquaman. I feel no one else is reading it, and that makes um, me sad. We're not actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's not that like. I mean, I've read like in like long ago Aquaman. I just. I don't know, like his character, like sometimes they either do it a right way, but then sometimes they get a little bit too information on the dialogue heavy sometimes. I mean, that's what I feel when I've read some Aquaman uh, comics, but I don't know. Like there's just nothing that lets me want to read more. I mean, I mean, he was in the Justice League and I know that he could talk to fish and everything, which I know many of you are Aquaman fans and I'm not mean to penalize anybody who, who's an Aquaman fan. It's just that I just never got the whole uh, thing of just reading about him, really. A lot of people didn't know these were two streams. Well, here you go. And Paul is actually a, a newer viewer. So thank you for watching the show. Again, usually we do have more people on the show, so don't worry. Uh, and in the future we will, but we are holding down the fort here. And going into Aquaman, yeah, same thing that Michael said. I'm not a huge Aquaman fan. Um, and it seems like even our, our Aquaman fans on the channel, um, like Brand's probably the bigger Aquaman fan. Not that he's the biggest Aquaman fan, but out of everyone in the group, he probably enjoys it the most. Um, and I think he's, he's dropped it a couple of times. I know Mike Spire Slayer, he's tried it. He dropped it, tried it dropped it so uh it, it doesn't seem like anyone's on the aquaman bandwagon but uh paul yeah. you gotta let us know there's some exciting stuff going on in there mm -hmm, absolutely because of uh i think we would like to know what's going on in the aquaman franchise we do have to have you ask about deceased dead planet um i will say because again we're not doing our top five deceased dead planet the sequel was actually my pick of the week this week i really really enjoyed deceased I thought there were some good cliffhangers, some really good twisted turns, and I thought it was even better than the first story. Um, might be up Michael's alley uh, for sure. 
we got to we got to get Michael to to read some more books. One thing I I think Michael, I think you have to read more indie stuff. Like I think if there's an issue one that comes out, like I think you have to like go through the description and be like, maybe I'll try that. Yeah. I sometimes I kind of uh miss those and uh work and life get in the way, but uh but I will definitely take a look at issue number ones when I see them on the pull list. We'll let you know which ones are good when they come out. Um, all right, let's get into another question here, which is the Black Knight. Are you guys as happy as I am that Marvel will be publishing the floppies for the books that went digital? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually I'm really happy that Marvel listened to the fans, right? Because you know we had both companies kind of doing their own thing, and I think Marvel really heard out that okay, or just heard from sales that this is not doing as well as the floppies. It probably is worth it if we just print these out. So I was very happy. I hope that means Valkyrie continues and we have more issues of that and. Um, I'll definitely be getting the books that I missed because I missed having those print copies. I don't think it affected Michael as much. I don't think he had to read any of the digital books from Marvel. Mm, not really, but um, I like how Marvel's listening to us and everything with uh, how they can go about this. And, uh, you know, with us being uh, Marvel uh, fans and everything, it's good that uh, they're actually hearing our voices for – you know, with all this situation that's going on. We're getting some Aquaman comments here. No, yeah, Dan Abnett's run during Rebirth was like it was written for a 12-year-old. The current run feels super um, mythos-driven and down-to-earth, so I'm really digging it. I know that he just had a baby. Mara's getting married. Uh, other than that, I mean, which are big details, I don't know much what's going on. Uh, let's mm -hmm. see. Okay, let's get into uh, some more news pieces here. Uh, speaking of DC, uh, so it looks like DC is definitely, and speaking on these digital books, they are getting more digital books out there. Shazam was canceled a few weeks ago and or maybe even months ago at this point. And now they're coming up with a digital first book for Shazam. And I'm, I'm not getting all any of these digital first books because it doesn't seem like anything exciting happens in these books, nothing like game changing. And I rather get them printed, even the Harley Quinn book, which uh, the Harley black, white and red. I'm waiting until I get it for print. Like I would love to read it, but I don't like the chapter formats. They're too short for me. Yeah, I would actually uh, agree with that. Like uh, there has been, uh, I actually read about that news about how DC is actually uh, um, doing the digitals and especially with um, canceling Shazam as one of them. But they've, they've been doing a really great job with uh, giving us the uh, digital stuff, especially that if we can go to... If we are, if we're afraid to go out to the comic store because of the uh, the whole virus thing that's going on, and I'm actually happy to know that DC delivered it to us because you know it it was um, better for us to read and uh, in case we don't have in case we don't miss anything important in the comic books. All right, let's and I we we have some people that like the digital first books. Also, I post the link to our. Top five panels, we do that every week. And if you guys vote in the bottom, you end up picking the panel that we vote for for the end, everyone votes for for the end of the month, for or end of the year, for best panel of the year. So be sure to vote in with the panel or with the poll below for your favorite panel. Yeah. Uh, let's see, a lot of people are asking us what we thought about Shazam uh, previously. And I liked the first couple of issues, I stuck with them, still sticking with it until it ends. And I just thought it really dropped off very quickly and they didn't know what direction it was going in and then it got canceled. So yeah, I don't think the coronavirus helped those things out, but I, I wanted to like Shazam a lot more than I did. Yeah. And I didn't read Shazam, so I have nothing to say about it, but for many people who have probably liked Shazam are not too happy to know that it's getting canceled because it has been selling what I heard very good. Like I had ups and downs in sales from what I heard. Not from sure. If I Shazam? Yeah. I I'm guessing I don't look at the sales as much. I'm not the source here, but I'm guessing it must've done pretty well because it was Jeff Johns behind it. So I don't, yeah. I don't think it did horrible. I think it, it was more of a direction thing, but again, I, I didn't look at the sales numbers, so I don't 
know if it did well or not. I, I mean, I know it wasn't like a top 10 book by any means. All right, let's get into the next thing, which is that Marvel is uh, Marvel Made is this new line where they're going to be selling convention exclusive merchandise. I didn't know how to feel about this because, you know, we have cons that are not happening right now. But how about once the cons happen? Are we going to have this exclusive merchandise that you would get at a con, which is special to go to a con on a website? Does that take away the experience of going to a Comic Con, waiting online, and getting exclusives? I think it does. Yeah. You know- yeah. Yeah. It it just gets more and more confusing. Like we understand that there's still lots going on, but it's like you don't know if the conventions are going to either happen or not happen. It's either one or the other. You can't just tell us like, oh, last second we just thought, oh, maybe we'll just have it and everything and then just throw it at us. I mean, I think what they should do, and in my opinion, is wait until a year or so, like when this started, like around March, I think it was like wait until March of 2021 when things hopefully should get better. And then maybe little by little, they can open up the conventions or just. So they're, they're not, this is online. So these are all things that they're buying. You can buy online, but um, I it's think the reason, not, they're, the reason they're doing it is because they've already made this merchandise and they're like, Oh shit, this comic God's not happening. So we need to sell it somewhere. I think that's why they're doing it, but yeah, it's very confusing. Yeah, so. I agree on that. All right, let's go into the next thing, which is that Wonder Woman 1984, the movie, is getting a tie-in one-shot. I'm a, I'm gonna definitely get this. I really like the the first movie. I'm very excited for the second, and I don't think DC does this enough. Actually, they don't really tie into their movies, and I think Marvel does it too much sometimes. So Marvel uh, I, does it way too much. Yeah, they do, and even like the likeness of the actors, you could start seeing within the comics or some storylines. They try to make it attached to the movies, but DC they tend not to do this at all. So I'm actually curious to have like a full on tie in book to the movie. Exactly, especially with uh, you know those that came out long ago. I mean, it's good that to not shrug it off and just uh, add them to uh, a film and everything. Because you know, let's just face it, things back then were really awesome, and we always like to look back at them. Whether we well, were- Wonder Woman nineteen eighty four is the um, the next movie coming out, so this is the the sequel of Wonder Woman. It's just called nineteen eighty four because it's setting of nineteen eighty four. So it's about the new story of Wonder Woman that they're tying into. Right. Just that's why I was pointing out there. Oh, I thought you said it's cool to look at the past. I thought you meant it was a Wonder no, Woman no, show I from the past. Put things from the past in the movie. Oh, so you mean the setting. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, sometimes all right, I, I didn't mean to confuse you because sometimes when I talk, it's just not specific. So um No, I got you now. I'm gonna try you. to keep more root beer. Um, Tevia asks if we got a Man of Steel tie-in comic. We did. That that was one that uh, that they did end up doing. I did not read it. I wasn't too invested in that. But Wonder Woman, definitely gonna try that. Also for BV, I didn't know that. I didn't see one for Batman vs Superman. I must have missed those. Thank you for correcting me on that. Hmm. All right, but let's get into the next thing. Oh, Mike wanted to talk about that, so I'm gonna delete that. Uh, all right. Next up, DC will have two Halloween specials in October. Hmm. I, I'm tired of these anthologies. I just, I don't care for them. I'm not going to pick these up. I think DC's releasing too many anthologies for my liking. For me, though, now see, when I pick up usually Halloween books, now Halloween to me starts like the trilogy of holidays. Like, you know, you got Halloween, then afterwards you have Thanksgiving, and then Christmas, or for people who celebrate Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, or whatever after Thanksgiving. You know, I like that. When the Halloween things come out, like it brings like that whole, I mean, I don't know how they're going because, you know, Halloween, sometimes they could go like really awesome or too far, you know, because Halloween's like more along lines of, you know, all the other stuff that I don't want to mention about that go too, too far. But for this one though, because it's from DC, I actually think that doing Halloween specials as well as holiday specials are very exciting, especially if it has, uh, you know, uh, anyone who likes holidays, like I said, such as I do because of the Trinity uh, holidays that happen. 
Dan GN says Halloween specials are an excuse to charge ten dollars for the book. Yeah, well, not ten dollars. Uh, okay, you're, it is an anthology I, book. Yeah. I mean, yes, you got a point on that. It is pretty pricey. I will admit that, but maybe that's how people get the books because they like it when it's a holiday of their liking. Because some people really like Halloween as a favorite. I think people also just like horror in general and seeing their favorite characters in the horror setting. So I get that. Not enough for me to pick those up, though. The 80th anniversary issues are enough. Yeah. Paul Baker says, I really like that Sinister House Halloween one shot they did a couple years ago. I got to see Paul Dini writing Harley and Satanic together, which was a delight. Ooh, Harley and Satana. Nice. So next up is something, you know, two things Michael wanted to discuss. First, we're going to talk about Back to the Future crossing over with the Transformers. Mm. So you're a wheelhouse, so go for it. So the thing is, is that I never thought that Back to the Future and Transformers would actually, like, intertwine with each other. Like, you have Transformers, who are these robots who transform into everything. And, like, didn't they go back in time a couple of times? Oh, with you're the asking the wrong gal. Oh, <laughs> I think they did. Because if there's a paradox that I remember of Transformers going back in time, that could actually uh, connect to Back to the Future. Because Back to the Future is where they go, you know, back in time, forward, uh, past, or any other uh, ways. But I actually thought that it was actually pretty interesting and not actually that I thought that they would uh, connect, but then after a while thinking about when I saw it on a news piece, maybe it can work as something really amazing to, um, you know, a crossover. Which, I mean, Transformers has been getting lots and lots of recognitions, whether it's in movies or comic books now, and they've been pretty much out there and they've been hitting uh, home runs. Because everybody is a huge fan of Transformers, whether they were the 80s or the live action uh, movies or comics. Are you going to pick up this this book in particular? Uh, you know, I might actually take a look into it just to see. Because I did watch all Back to the Future movies and I do like Transformers. So actually, well, when's it coming out actually? Let's see. Because that, that would actually be something I would actually look into. It is coming out. Does Probably October, be? November. That's yeah, October, October first. So yeah, I'll be definitely looking forward uh, to uh, October. There are lots of October books that I'm looking forward to uh, checking out. But uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about it. Tavia asks, any opinion on Transformers getting a Netflix series war for Cybertron? No, I I definitely don't. I didn't even know this was happening. I mean, I watch Netflix, just not those types. Like, I mean, I, if anything, I usually just see stuff on YouTube because sometimes whatever's on Netflix goes to YouTube anyway, if, if they're little shorts and stuff. That's how I got to see Harley a little bit with her uh, I'm glad. episodes. <laughs> It is good, and they do have a lot of clips on YouTube. Oh, All yeah. right, let's get into the next big thing from the week we did not do a show, and that is Alien and Predator coming to Marvel Comics. Oh, Again, man. not my wheel. I have seen Aliens. I like Aliens, but probably not enough for me to want to read a comic about it. Like, I like the movies. I'll, I would probably see it if they come out with more sequels for Aliens, but I don't think I'm invested enough to, to go buy a comic. No, the thing is, is that we've read Aliens and Pre versus Predators in Dark Horse comics, but to see them actually jump to a Marvel company, that's really big, and that's really something uh, to see that series uh, happen in a different uh, comic company. And that's I want to actually see because it intrigues me to see because I have read Alien Predators in a which McCall like those trade paperbacks from Dark Horse years ago, and I actually want to see how Marvel the way they see Alien vs. Predator because different comic companies have different ideas of how they see characters. Sometimes they see it the same way, and there are others who see them a different way. But for Marvel, I want to actually see what's up, Ron P. Uh, I really want to see how 
or what direction Marvel is planning to bring aliens and predators. Yeah, what, what creators are going to be on it? I, I or if there's any crossover opportunities, of course, as well uh, with other you know Marvel characters. That could be interesting. Very so interesting. We'll, we'll see where that one goes. But that honestly, that was definitely more for Chris. I know he's the one who actually read those yeah. comics. So we have him on course. next. You can ask him his thoughts on it. But let's get into the last comic news piece, and then we're getting into some media. And that is Image Comics teases a crossover. So there's something called crossover. I believe Donnie Cates is on it. Uh, and the San Diego at home is going to announce more about that. And I don't know if it's an actual crossover. That sounds pretty interesting uh, because obviously image is so known for creator on work and like doing its own thing in its own world. So I think it's going to be cool if it actually ends up being a crossover of some sort. Yeah. I think that in the comic uh, book uh, community, what I'm seeing as a pattern here is that they're doing like, in a good way, before you say, anyone says anything, in a good way, I see that there are lots of comic companies who are working together and doing crossovers. Like I said before, you have Transformers and Back to the Future that are working together. You have Aliens and Predators working for uh, Marvel when they were with Dark Horse. And then you got so many other crossovers that have it, like uh, Transformers and Terminator or... Uh, which McCall it that happened recently uh, when we had turtles and Batman teaming up with each other like two or three times, you know, like I like that they that uh, books that either we're reading or not reading that we get more information about even He-Man and the uh, injustice too, you know, like they, yeah, we're getting a lot, a lot of different franchises we haven't seen before crossover. Yeah. There are lots cool. of endless, right. There's lots of endless possibilities, which is, that's why I see a pattern of the comic book industry is doing crossovers because it, you know, it, it would be something interesting for readers to read about whether they know the characters or don't know the characters, but it's something that uh, intertwines together. And that's what makes a comic book a lot interesting. Even with crossovers, like I said, there's been lots and lots of crossovers that have been going on in DC Marvel. I've been hearing lots of, Crossover ideas, probably that's going to happen with uh, those two. Simon R says, sorry I'm late. Are Chris and Brant doing okay? Haven't seen them in a bit. Uh, Chris, as of today, just is not feeling well, but he's doing okay. Um, and then Brant is uh, moving. So that's why he can't be on, and he's dealing with all that. So he yeah. he's busy. But probably uh, next week we should have a, a full squad at least, or four of us, or yeah. This could be a lifetime. You might just yeah, see. Yeah, you never that. know. Yeah, you never know. This is a crossover right here. I mean, Mike is doing tennis camp. So it's it, don't worry. Everyone wanted to be here. It just was definitely yes. circumstantial. Life happens. Why uh, they couldn't be here and why me and Michael are holding the fort to have a show for you guys. Yeah, but we're trying. <laughs> And the NGN says DC slash Looney Tunes is still too weird for me. Oh, yeah, they had that too. Now, I can't say it was too weird. Like, it was goofy. I mean, when they did the DC's perspective of Looney Tunes, it was more towards uh, DC's way of how they see Looney Tunes. But when you did Looney Tunes' way of DC and making it funny, I mean, guilty pleasure because I grew up watching Looney Tunes, you know, back in the 90s and. It, it, it was just a sold out for me when I read them. I mean, it's guilty pleasure, like I said, but I liked how DC saw Looney Tunes, but went a little bit darker, like not too dark, like just a little bit darker on their side. All right, let's get into some of our media news here. This is from Michael. Captain America is in Fortnite. Have you played? Are you excited? Like I, I have played Fortnite in the past, and I have seen Deadpool in Fortnite. But see, Captain America that came out, especially this past Fourth uh, of July, which is perfect because Captain America stands for, you know, the guess guy. What America? America, <laughs> right? And just to see him in Fortnite, just to uh, get justice, especially with the shield that he has, because we've been seeing. I mean, Captain America is all about just war. It's not just about just his character. It's just about that. He's a war warrior character that just goes into war and he'll just push forward like, you know, like a 
kind of maybe like G.I. Joe, but a little bit more of an extremist, you know, with, with a shield and, and how. And we learned that G.I. Joe is not one person. Many no, people. no, he's many people. people. No, but I'm just saying like in that perspective, but we have a shield and, you know, that does all these uh, powerful moves and crazy stuff. So I think that he was a pretty good add-on to Fortnite. For that so do, they keep they, uh, do they keep they? Do they keep them forever, or is it just like a limited time that these characters are on there? Uh, I think they keep them forever because I'm not sure if they go for a limited time and then you have to buy them as a DLC, or if they stay on. Because if it's a free added update, then they stay with you forever. But it kind of would make sense, though, like if they were doing this like if they had it for a limited time and if you like the character you could buy the dlcs because when it comes to dlcs you know how the gaming industries are with you know with all the characters that i because if you like a character and if it's in high demand that this character is good it'll definitely be a dlc where people have to pay for it but i think if it's an update because there's a difference between dlcs and updates maybe i think they keep them i'm not too sure actually about that well those fortnite fans should let us know in the uh it's limited time tevia said oh it is uh, so tevia we're going to talk about the sabrina stuff that's going to be our last topic since that's the title of our title of our uh show here but let's yep. get into star girl um only going to be on the cw for season two so this is another thing we were going to talk about last week but we didn't have the show um yeah, I, I'm curious what this means for DC Universe. Uh, please, no negativity in the comments, because I know already saying that is going to blow up to some negativity. Please don't do that. But uh, I think it, it's going to be interesting to see what shift DC Universe makes uh, and if they're just going to be focused on comics or if they're going to be doing other shows. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I literally can't say much, So, um, but... I just wanted to reference it because it, it was a big news piece. So yeah, I just I just have a quick, quick question. So for Stargirl, this is the first time she's on CW for season two because she was in another. So she was, so she was on the CW for season one, but they were doing it at the same time with DC Universe. So now for no. season two, they're just doing the CW and not DC Universe, even though originally it was going to be a DC Universe show. Yeah, because they've been going back and forth with some of the stuff like saying, should we put it on CW or should we put it on DC Universe? Because they uh, connect together because they're uh, Warner Brothers for the CW. Yeah, yeah. So they, it's just different platforms, same people, you know, run the production. They don't run the CW. So Warner yeah. Brothers is not CW, but they just have a lot of their productions at the CW. Yeah. Um, and they used to be Warner Brothers. Uh, all right, let's get in. Okay, see, this is, I told you, no negativity on that. So we are going to take away the negativity on that comment. Yeah, uh, no negativity. None. Zilch. No negativity. Uh, I gave you guys the warning on that. All right, let's get into the next thing before we get into our, our big topic. So this is actually your time to, to get some questions in because we... We yeah. have a lot of time left, and we're almost done with the. the yeah, narratives. I mean, if you got any questions, like you said, comic related, uh, anything you have questions for me or Cat of anything, or you know, or our YouTube channels or Cat's Kickstarter or anything, just uh, let us know in the questions, and we will actually be more than happy to answer because your Q and As are important to us, and uh, we love to answer your questions of what you want to know about us as well as a group because there's more than just me and Kat. There's the rest of us. But uh, yeah, but we'll we can't air, we, we we'll just air can't out all their dirty laundry right here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we just can't answer for Chris Brand or or uh, Mike uh unless we know them. If we know them enough to answer it, yes, but if we don't know it then we, we don't wanna, you know, make a fool out of us and We'll yeah. see what type of questions everyone comes up with. Yeah, okay. yeah, real questions, yeah. Let's get into this next topic, which is new Gotham TV show for HBO Max, and this is going to be the Gotham PD show, and it's going to be a bit more serious. It's going to be related to the Robert Pattinson movie coming out with Batman. Uh, we have um, Terrence Winter, who's done Sopranos and Vinyl. Um, I actually know Terrence, and he's an awesome guy, so was very, very, very excited to see he'll be show running this. 
And uh, Matt Reeves, who is the director of Batman, will also be producing it. So, yeah, I am excited for this show. I'm really, I like the the minds behind it. And I'm excited to see a different type of Batman show that's not related to Gotham and or Gotham. The just show gonna say, um, yeah, yeah. I was just going to say, with Gotham ending, I was saying, so is this going to take place? Uh, after Gotham, but then you just said it, it isn't, so... Uh, no, yeah, it's not related to that Gotham, so it's going to be related to the new Batman movie. Yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty much uh, um, bringing Batman into a mix of things, especially with, uh, I mean, a lot of things, in a good way. Yeah, I mean, it's Batman, so understandable, and I'm excited to see some new material for HBO Max. I haven't touched it yet, so... I will see. All right, let's get into the next, the big topic of this, of tonight's show, which is, is Archie TV ending? Because we have two Archie TV shows that were canceled this this week, and that is Katie Keene and Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, all in different stre- uh, streaming services and uh, cable. So Katie Keene was a CW show, Chilling Adventures was a Netflix show, and both were canceled. They didn't end. They both canceled. So I am curious what this means for the future of Archie TV uh, because are they going to actually want to release more content after Katie Keene was their kind of spinoff of Riverdale that didn't do well. Sabrina, I think, did well for them, but maybe the numbers didn't do as well as the yeah. the future seasons went. Yeah, along. I'm surprised really because I thought Sabrina was doing well also because of you know many people who were big fans of Sabrina Teenage Witch you know years ago cuz that's what I was you know cuz I watched Sabrina you know from time to time uh not the new one like the the past yeah one. the, the second yeah one. but I thought that this was actually doing well that's it's very surprising to actually know that they're being canceled because not many people were uh enjoying it i mean we don't know why i mean it kind of was all right from what i heard yeah it wasn't it wasn't my thing but a lot of people enjoyed it and yeah i am curious if if we're actually gonna get more of these archie shows and what that would look like and what happens after riverdale is archie kind of done with their tv shows i don't know and is riverdale gonna really last forever I, i know the cast or doesn't really love being on the show so i once their contracts are up or is the show going to last forever there's people already leaving i think one of the parents already left so how long is riverdale really going to last or is it just going to be like one of the the original characters staying on then you have people leaving so yeah what is the future of rttv i don't know i mean riverdale is obviously a big success for them and and have influenced a lot of their moves they've made that or we'll see. That or would you maybe consider if they do this that they might go to CW or one of the other shows like maybe uh, Fox or NBC? Um, I think really? it depends if they have a campaign big enough that people want to save it. Honestly, since it's been canceled, I haven't been seeing people being like, "Oh my god, we need Sabrina. Where's my Sabrina?" Like, I haven't really seen many social media at least uh, maybe because i'm not part of the fandom but uh, i haven't seen a lot of social media posts about it besides like um sad it's ending yeah but for archie tv like if it ends i mean we could see them probably splitting off into different networks probably like i said for riverdale i mean if it went to cw i wouldn't be too surprised because riverdale's on cw i thought it was on the other channel nope riverdale's on cw uh, Chilling wow. Adventures is on Netflix. Katie Keene was on the CW. Didn't do quite well. And then the Riverdale's is on the CW. And that hasn't been canceled. Riverdale, I'm sure, is going to go on for a while. But it's the question of the spinoff shows. It's the questions of the other properties of, of Archie, if they're going to really do anything after. Because they're not Marvel or DC. They don't like thousands of properties. But they have enough that they, they could have made more shows and some interesting shows. Yeah, that or they might go to Netflix probably if Archie TV ends. Yeah, well, we'll we'll, like, we'll yeah. see because again, Sabrina was canceled off of Netflix. I mean, I don't know if Katie Keen. I think it depends on if Katie Keen when their first season goes on Netflix if it does extremely well and if again if there's enough people who are petitioning and and rioting on online saying, "Oh, we want Katie Keen." Again, I, 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 I don't. That. I don't 
I don't think riot's a good word to use. <laughs> no, but uh, being they want the show a lot. <laughs> they they want the show a lot, and they are trying to get it back on and petitioning for sure is I guess the, the better term. But right. they I don't I haven't seen much for that. So all right, let's get into some more questions, which is biggest yeah. pet peeve. Biggest pet peeve. Biggest pet peeve of uh, of life. Is it um, uh, yeah or anything? Life? Yeah, I think life. Uh, biggest pet peeve of life. I would say arrogant people are usually is my biggest pet peeve. I mean, yeah. Sometimes I mean, I, there there are ways that I could. Uh, see people about you know how i mean that's just a train me about how people really are rather than them just telling me because it's like saying like you know like there, there are ways i see people like you know like i say oh yeah this person's all right and then there's some people that rub off the wrong way and i'm like saying uh we're gonna have a problem but i really don't get that's your biggest well what's your pet peeve meaning like what grinds your gears and not even about people about anything well you know what really grinds my gear? no i'm kidding <laughs> so nothing I, and michael like, doesn't have any pet peeves no no it's like i guess how like when car services you know when you know when you call for an uber and then sometimes they go the other way and you're just waiting for a car to come and then Instead of them coming to you, they just go the other way and then they go far, far off and then you wasted money or and that's not you, your car anymore. Yeah. Or 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 better this. Like you set a location where you are and then the car doesn't know where you are, and then they call you saying, So where are you? And then I'm telling the person, Yeah, I'm on such and such, and then they can't find you. And I'm like saying, Well, then I'm gonna cancel the ride, and then they don't like that very much because that loses their their money and stuff, but uh, that's all I could really think of. Um, I got to say, since the last time I talked to Michael, we've talked about ride-sharing apps twice. Uh huh. This is this is a second time in a row that we have talked about ride-sharing apps. <laughs> so Michael has a big grind, uh, a big uh, gear to grind with Uber. Uh, so let's yeah. get into- well, please, don't, don't drive past me, Uber. I like your service. Yes, he just wants to be picked up by an Uber on time. And you know, he they need to know where he is. Yeah. All right, next up is Tree Bark. Do you think CW will tackle super villain show or a super villain show? I think that'd be interesting and be something different. I don't know if they will, but I'm sure they're they going to run out of ideas. So is CW going to tackle, like, a instead of a superhero, a super villain? I think Ooh. that'd be cool. Um, hmm, a super villain? That's actually a good question. Because I know that they're more along the lines of a superhero origins, but a super villain... That wouldn't be too bad, actually. I would actually like to see um, maybe a Bizarro villain or a I think there is a Bizarro show coming out, but not for the CW. I forget. <laughs> it was actually supposed to be for DC Universe. I don't know if it's still happening or not, but or, that was announced. Or, like, yeah, or Sinestro with the way how he became the Gold Lantern because he went from green to the yellow. Huh. That's actually That actually pinpoints to a lot of good ideas that maybe – there should be a super villain, but I, I think that they usually do villains at from time to time. But well, they do them within the show. I think the person acting is like, "Would you want to see a super villain as a lead?" And I think that yeah, that'd be cool. And, and as a title itself, yeah, yeah as the title of the show, yeah. Uh, Tevi cool. asks, "How do you feel about Marvel releasing another event called King of Black?" I think it's a Venom event, so it's not. It's I don't think it's a a the whole Marvel universe. So. I don't care because I don't read Venom. So I'm not gonna read Venom. But haven't we gotten enough symbiote stories? You would think, but I mean, they're popular, and this no, volume of Venom in particular is yeah, very popular. Yeah they're, yeah, they're popular, but it's kind of been, you know, in my opinion, it's been kind of been like okay, like we know what the symbiote does, but it's it's just too much. Like, like we we how can I put this like. It's just been uh, overdosed many, many times of, you know, repetitiveness. 
Uh, yeah, unless I you're in the direction. I agree. Again, I can't be the one speaking on it because I don't read the series. I don't know if the the book entails for an event, but that's probably a better question for Mike. Not this Mike, other Mike. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have yourself. a comment from Serenity? Well, Fantastic Four Empire or whatever. I think uh, Empire was awesome, was their comment. I liked Empire this week. I, I didn't love the Avengers book, but I enjoyed Fantastic Four because I've been reading Fantastic Four. And this issue, we get to see the Fantastic Four gamble, the kids, and Sue Storm helps them out. And I thought that wow. was really fun. Actually, that's uh, part of the panel. So I am going to repost the panels in, in the chat. So if you guys want to vote for your favorite panel for the week, that's there. All right, let's get into... Are you hoping death metal reboots DC? If so, what are you most afraid of losing from current continuity? No, I really don't. I don't need another reboot. No, thank you. Just just try to work with what you got. I don't really actually see a necessity of why there should be a reboot in death metal. I mean, it's just one thing in itself. I mean, I've read some of the death metal magazines, so I, I don't. So death it. metal, that's a different. So death metal is in the DC book going on right now. So yeah, but, event. I know, but I'm just saying, like, by looking at it, I really don't see a reason for there to be a reboot for for that reason. Yeah, for DC. Yeah, well, yeah. I know they're trying to dance around a lot of the rebirth stuff um, and all that. But again, I'm dropped the book, so I don't have many thoughts on it. Do you guys have HBO Max and is Young Justice on it? No, uh, it's only on DC Universe. I do have HBO Max because I share it with a few friends. Other than that, I probably wouldn't have HBO Max, but one of my friends was very kind to let us all share. So I haven't gone on it yet, though, so there hasn't been a reason. Yeah, I don't have it. I, I just have just Netflix and YouTube on a TV. That's pretty much it. <laughs> We have Justin who says, what do you think of stores selling the gold Negan for hundreds of dollars? Follow up question. How much money would you personally spend on a comic? Recent spent $75 on TMNT and um, my Amorphic Power Rangers one per store variant. Huh. Uh, That's gold? a good question. Well, if it's gold and if it's like something rare that, you know, like uh, something like uh, as a because gold goes up for a lot of money depending on what gold that uh, they use. So, I mean, if it's for hundreds of dollars, like not too far in the hundreds, I mean, it could be a best sale. And it all depends on how it looks in person because the way you could see it on the internet, it may look really cool. But then when you have it right in your hands in front of you, then it looks like not what you expected, and if that makes any sense. Yeah, for sure. I think it depends on what you're getting. Like, you know, If you're a huge Walking Dead fan, sure, spend the money on it. You don't know when a Walking Dead book is going to come out again. It's very rare. Do we do what you will with your money? Um, but I'm not going to do that for every book. You know, it, it really has to be a special franchise or a special character. That I'll drop money like that. But honestly, rarely will I do it at a comic store. I'll usually do it at a comic con. Um, be like, oh, there's an exclusive. Yeah. Here. I'll buy it. I'll, I'll yeah, because yeah, it's good that I rather see it before I purchase it to see whether I want it or not. And depending yeah. on the price range. As and well. if it's at a store, I feel like how rare can it be? I know you have the one per store variants. But when you're at a con, you know it's just for that event, so i rather do it that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, this is the comic industry for you. DNGN says, Katie Keen, you mean Nancy Drew? No, Nancy Drew has been renewed. Nancy Drew is still going on. Also not an Archie property. Katie Keen is an Archie property and has been canceled. <laughs> so I yeah. did mean what I said for that one. Now let's see what else you got. Got lots of key. Think Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. We need them. Um, I think they did it wrong. It never should have been a Katie Keene show. Should have been a Josie and a P Pussycats musical show like fans wanted. I agree. Josie was in the show. People yeah. liked her. She had a built-in fan base, I think even more than Lucy Hale, in the regard at least to characters. So, uh, yeah, no, I agree with you. I think it should have been a Josie show. Absolutely. Uh, Paul says, I quit Riverdale halfway through episode one. What do the cast hate about the show? Um, mostly the story. <laughs> so, um, you, you can watch interviews and you can kind of see how much fun they have with, 
some of the the storylines that they were presented. I also don't watch Riverdale. I've just sent these videos by friends and I'm like that's hysterical. So like Comic Con videos and stuff. Let's see what else we got here. We got a lot of comments about Archie, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Do you think Sabrina can work on the CW with all the the Satanism themes? Probably mm -hmm. not. Well, who knows? Because they have like supernatural. It could. Stuff. It could work. In yeah. some ways, it could work actually, if if done right, of course. Black Knight says, have you seen the new trailer for the animated Star Trek show cartoon? Nope. Um, I have not. I'm not a Star Trek fan. I don't think my not Trek here. either. I mean, I know my fiance is a Trekkie fan, but I'm I'm Star Wars, so sorry. I mean, I like Star Trek a little bit, you know, with uh, watching some stuff here and there, but not a big fan like I am of Star Wars. Commuting in New York is its own special hell. Yes, it is. It mm. very much is. It's not honestly, it's not as bad now because of the coronavirus, but Oh no, yeah, but before you're then, risking your life, so that's yeah, like, no, because when you commute in the city, it's like when you go to Times Square or something, and this was before the corona, like you couldn't even like a car couldn't even cr like uh, go well, past. Car literally is not allowed to go in Times Squares, which you know, rightfully so, safety wise. Um, well, no, no, no like, like yeah, because they usually have taxi cars and stuff like that, but like trying to get do the three-way because people are walking you know and even when you go to javis center i'll never forget weekends where people just bump into you and i've had many camera you know experiences of being there so it's it's a big crowd but right now unfortunately with stuff it's not the same and i don't know if missing it is a good thing or a bad thing but yeah, I, uh, someone who's from Staten Island, uh, going to the city is even worse. So uh, there is no direct transit to the city. So I don't. Well, they have a ferry, I, don't they? Use the ferry to go. To you the have city? to use the train to get to the ferry to go to the city. There's no actual like you guys have a subway that is attached to the city. We right. don't have a subway attached to the city, and the ferry is not. It's only one place you can go to with the ferry. Like with a train, obviously there's different stops. So the ferry, you go to that one place and it's not all the city. So you have to, there's a lot of traveling involved is the point. Uh, the fact of Staten Island. Sucks. All right, Tibia, <laughs> um, how do you feel about the Batwoman recasting? Um, I, I'm excited to see a new voice on Batwoman. I didn't really quite like the first season. I hope having a new actress will help. I think it's great that we have a black actress. I think it's great that the actress is bisexual and that the character will be a lesbian because, you know, obviously that's a huge part for Batwoman uh, character. So I, I hope that it's good. And yeah, I, I really didn't like the first season, so I, I don't think it can get worse. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm hoping that the new character will help this out. And, and like I said, I'm really excited for... Uh, the, you know, having a person of color and I think that diversity and... and um, that voice will be important for the show. So I'm very excited for that. All right, let's see. Um, there's there's so many comments I have to look through to get the questions here. If you catch anything, let me know, Michael. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, I let's mean, see. They're mostly talking about like Star Wars and Star Trek so Yeah, I'm far. not seeing any question questions we'll yet. We'll see JLS uh, comics came in. What's up, JLS? How's it going, JLS? Also, all Negan comic books proceeds go to the comic book store. Yeah, I thought that was a really cool additive to, additive to um, getting that book is that it, it was made to actually help the comic stores during coronavirus. So I thought that was cool. Uh, if you could go back in time and get your favorite comic as a child or comic that you know will be worth millions in today, uh, just bring it into right now in perfect edition, which would you pick? I feel like everyone would say action comics, right? Because that or Amazing Spider-Man issue one. I, I would, would love it as a person. I would love Amazing Spider-Man like more in my collection. But as someone who's going back in time, like you're gonna pick the one that's most expensive so you can sell it and make some millions. But yeah, but action <laughs> comics definitely would be on a lot of people's uh, pull list of what they would do to go back in time, and uh, also Detective Comics. Uh, Issue one would be another great deal. Issue of, uh, 
27, 24. She, that, the, the first appearance of Batman's Detective Comics issue 24, 27, let me say. 27, I was right. Yeah. So then that would also be good. But there, there are a lot of comics uh, that were sold years ago that actually would uh, make a lot more of uh, the money depending on uh, the sales as well as how people liked it. And as well as if you uh cgc uh the book and if it's like a 9.8 or 9.9 especially then that's a very very expensive deal you got going there oh yeah sure Let's keep that one in condition uh so next question from dngn have you kept up with tom taylor's suicide squad no i actually dropped it uh, michael is uh mike's a big fan uh, of that one michael does not read that I believe everyone else is reading Suicide Squad besides us. So you you've axed the wrong crowd. So sorry, DMGN. How did you like the last Star Wars movie? I had to leave 20 minutes into the movie. I didn't love it. I really didn't like it much, the last one. I did like Last Jedi, but I really didn't like I am I unfortunately didn't see the last one, but I really do want to see it though, because I mean I don't know. I just never had the time to go see it because I was, uh, you know, between work and everything. And I feel really bad. I never got to see it. I'm sure one day you'll be able to. Oh, yeah, what's definitely. Your, what's your favorite comic book to read? Uh, I mean, I guess we could talk about current comics. My favorite current comic to read? I would say Runaways, but it's not going on right now because they haven't announced mm -hmm. when that's returning. Or Kitty Pride. Yeah, but she she has Marauders, but I don't think Marauders like. I love Kitty. <laughs> yeah, I, we know that. <laughs> I, do. I love my girl Kitty, but she doesn't have her own series. She has Marauders, and she's dead in it. So I can't I'm gonna one day. I'm gonna one that. day see a, an action figure Kitty Pryde. I'm gonna say I'm getting this for Cat. Like I one day, so. I'm gonna see it. You know. I hope so for sure. But for me, though, I mean, Family Tree is a good issue. It is Family Tree. And is good. And I do read Spider Man, uh, Punisher. I mean, the the Soviet Punisher for me didn't really sit in well. I mean, there were some Punishers that were good, and there were. I think it was just the one that wasn't. But it's either Spider Man, Punisher, Teen Titans, which is the now Teen Titans, and uh, Robin Hood from uh, Xenoscope. Love Robin Hood. We have life grip and also, yeah, definitely keep coming with the questions, guys. So I think we're like starting to wind down with the questions. Um, favorite hero and villain from DC slash Marvel. Ah. So, well, Marvel, I think, uh, well, I would say Mayday Parker, but I also am a huge Spider-Man fan. But I think what, what would you say is your favorite Marvel hero? My favorite Marvel hero. I mean, it's always going to be Spider-Man no matter what. There you go. So Spider-Man is my, so all in the Spider-Man family. Then favorite villain from Marvel has to go to Green Goblin for me. But, but for me, it's either between Venom or Carnage. Well, no, actually Carnage because Venom's more of an anti-hero. So I would say Carnage is my favorite. Right. So that's Marvel. DC yeah. now. So DC for me, Stephanie Brown, uh, for sure. Favorite DC hero. Ah, DC. I mean, I could say Superman, but I think that there's uh, another favorite on DC, and I can't seem to pinpoint it. Unless it is really Superman, I can't um, pinpoint that, so I'll just go with Superman for now. And favorite villain from DC? Again, I'm going to be generic and say the Joker. I would have to say Doomsday. Doomsday, cool. Doomsday is pretty much of a bad ass. I mean, yes, he did kill Superman, and it was kind of upsetting and sad, but uh, but yeah, he's like almost the all powerful villain in that uh, in that sense. He is. Uh, next question is from DNGN. A little off topic, but did you guys see Hamilton? Actually, I did the other night. Ooh, nice. So we can actually I, talk about it. Yes, yeah, so about some Hamilton. Yeah, because my fiance actually got um, one of the deals from uh, one of her friends to see Hamilton. That movie blew my mind. Like, the Broadway show. Like, I liked how... I mean, yes, it did the history, but I liked how 
when you hear the music, it's like so upbeating, and there's like all these uh rapper parts that happened, and then the King Henry guy that sang the same song of that la da da da. I mean, I wish I could get her in here and talk about You'll it. Be back, she, yeah. Um, I'm three times time. King Henry came in three times with that song, and I'm like, damn. I, I like that. I, I'm a I'm a huge Hamilton fan. I, I saw the play, so uh, after the original cast was um, out. But I have seen the play, and I've been listening to the soundtrack since, you know, the, mm -hmm. the show's been out. And then I did get to see the original cast, uh, obviously through the Netflix special. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Disney Plus special. And, yeah, I thought it was great. It was really cool to see the little quirks that each – the original members did for, for the parts – Favorite song though, Michael. What was your favorite song? I know a lot of them. Um, I don't know if they sound similar, but I know a lot of them collide a bit. I think but. it was the. Oh, I can't remember. It was where uh, there was a rap between uh, Hamilton and uh, Thomas Jefferson. Mm, like the first, the cabinet the meeting. Second. Yeah, like the meeting. I mean, I thought that was actually pretty good. That was good. I like uh, the ones that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, it, it's a little bit more Broadway esque. Like, I enjoy uh, Burn from Eliza when she's like, you know, burning all those letters. Like, I'm not going to be in history anymore. I love that. I do enjoy You'll Be Back because, again, it's just so different from the other songs that we have. But yeah, I, I think the one thing I enjoy about Hamilton is you always have a different favorite. Like, Dear Theodosia is really good. So, uh, it's a good play, guys, if you haven't seen it. Uh, I yeah, actually thought yeah, I was, yeah, I was. I was just blown away about how it was so like put together and just the whole action of it. I mean, it, it did give me, I mean, it, it just felt like a, like a good taste of music. Like it was actually something that interests me, you know, in that. Mm -hmm. long, but <laughs> yeah. It's very long, but it, yeah, no, it's, it's great. All right, let's get into the next thing. Uh, Tevia, did you guys see Mortal Kombat Scorpion Revenge? No. No, nope, I did not see that. But, I mean, I'm, I'm more of a Sub-Zero fan because I know Sub-Zero could beat Scorpion, but that, that's just my opinion. So, just saying. Let's go into the next one. Are there any comic tropes you missed that you haven't seen in a while? Comic tropes? I would say a trope as in, like, something that ha like a cliche. Oh, um, I would say the identity reveal, but not to like two family members or friends. I feel like I haven't seen in a while because everyone knows. Usually it's like to the world. I've seen it a lot, but I haven't seen like to a friend or whatever in a while. Hmm. What, what would it take to make a Wonder Woman book sell well? Well, let's hope the next Wonder Woman book, Mariko Tamaki and Mikkel Janin looks like a great run. I'm excited. And you know, obviously at Greg Rucka, who uh, launched DC Rebirth stuff. I think it's just a good creative team, and the yeah, next and team looks great. Not to mention Meredith Finch did an awesome Wonder Woman. Yeah, well. Meredith, did, Meredith did well, too. It was like towards the end of uh, New 52, so I don't know how well it sold, but it, it was a good story. Mm -hmm. uh, have either of you been to Colorado? Uh, I have not been to Colorado. No, but, I mean, I've heard that Colorado is – pretty cold if you go to the mountain it but. is pretty cold no but like i don't know like i've been hearing that one day if i were to travel i mean that would be one of the places because i've got a lot of places i would love to travel where and do you want to go if you could travel now and coronavirus didn't exist and oh, money was an option well i would love to travel to florida to go see uh you know, Disney World because guilty pleasure. I mean, I haven't been to Disney since 1999. So I would love to go to uh, Florida just for Disney reasons and every park, just see how it evolved. My second trip would be to Italy, of course. And my third trip would be to Japan because they have like this whole super potato store, whatever it's called, where they have all the games and stuff. I mean, I will be stuck in that game store that's like, for hours. And there's like, I think one big one, I forgot what it was called, where it has a Miss Pac-Man or whatever logo it is on there. And they have floors of all the games and stuff. And plus, they have lots of stuff in Japan that I would really love to see. And that leads to going to the fourth place. Oh, no, the fourth place would be Virginia, because I like Alexandria. And then fifth would be Colorado. 
Oh, there. So within America, you would say Virginia is, you know, Florida was your number one. Florida. Place. Yeah. For me in America, I've been to a lot of places. So in America. In America. You would like to go to Disney the way those little I've kids. been there before. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of a place I haven't been. I think it'd be kind of cool to go to Nashville or New Orleans. All oh, ten. Yeah, I've never been to those two places. And then out of country, surprisingly enough, I've never been to Canada. <laughs> so. Oh yeah, that's that. That's added to my bucket list. The so sixth place now, Canada. Yeah, I would like Maybe. to go to Canada. I would like to go Australia, of course. Um, Japan I as well. Quebec is beautiful in Canada. Yeah, I like that. It's just every area of Canada is very different. Um, and we're from New York, so we really have no excuse. Like, we could go to Niagara Falls and just go. It's oh, not that far away. But... I would love to go to Niagara Falls. Yeah, that Niagara would Falls nice. would be nice, too. I've never, again, weirdly enough, never been to Niagara Falls. And it's in my we, we don't, I mean, she travels much, me, unfortunately. Not yet, but maybe someday I will. Yeah, yeah. never know. Uh, we had another. Or train or bus. That's yeah, I think that, I think train probably is the best route for Niagara Falls. I, I mean, I'm sure they, they have a plane, but. It's pretty close because it's New York. Why was yeah, so I think ride? yeah? And so I don't think a plane ride would go there unless they're gonna travel around the world to. You know, I mean, they go to there. Buffalo, New York, so I'm sure it goes there. It's just you take a small oh, yeah. plane. So, all right, let's get. In. This is a little bit of a heavier question, but I'll answer it. Uh, do you think there's too many superior shows with politics? I mean, yeah. I like connection to the real world. Just I'm not getting into uh, politics. All, all I'm. Yeah, um, I will very much shortly answer that and say I personally like when stories delve into real world situations and I enjoy it. I know it's not for everybody, but I think a creator always has a right to write about whatever they want and everyone has a right to pick up if they want to or not. But I usually enjoy it. Again, it depends on the topic and depends if it organically works in the story. Um, I think that's all the questions. So I think we're going to start wrapping up, but thank you guys for watching and helping us through <laughs> our, our show here. And I hope you enjoyed. And again, I hope next week we'll have, um, at least three people so we could talk about yeah. the top five books, uh, and we're but, gonna start. but we could talk about key issues. Oh, right. We didn't do key issues. You were right. So we're going to do key issues before we go. So Key issues here. We got, uh, of course, the Amazing Experiment issue 44. Yep. Honestly, I don't remember what happened in the last issue. I think it was where, um, oh, God. Where, uh, oh, oh, it was where uh, Spider Man Boomerang were going up against. Oh, it was a filler arc. It was, so this is yeah, a new arc. Yeah. I'm reading it here. Kindred has big one. plans with Sin Eater. So it looks like it's going to be a, um, an actual big story with Sin Eater and Kindred. So look right. forward to that. Yeah, the kindred one, right? That that's what it is. Yeah. All right, let's go into the next one, which is Fantastic Four Empire Tie-in. Again, I liked issue zero. I was kind of surprised by it, and I like Fantastic Four, so I'll read that. Next up is Family Tree, which we were just discussing. Yep. I'm curious to see if they're going to go to the time period that they ended, not in the last issue, but the issue before, where we saw the future. Yeah, so can I we get the badass that. future, please? Yeah, I would definitely like to see that for sure. Um, let's go. Any other thoughts on Family Tree? I just hope we see the future. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I agree. Next up is Spire Woman issue two, which I'm really excited for. I really enjoyed Spire Woman issue one. I think Carla is a great writer. Also, Betty Page, which I could connect to, comes out tomorrow by the same writer. And I've, I've really been enjoying what Dynamite's been doing with Betty Page. I think it's a, a really cool book. And the free comic book day books are the last things we're going to talk about. So we have X-Men and Ranger Slayer. And these are both free. So you could just get them for free. And yeah, gonna, I... You're going to yeah. get Ranger Slayer? Yeah. I'm going to actually take a look at that. Yeah. And then if I believe it officially comes out next week. So if you don't catch the free comic book day book, you could just get the, the Ranger Slayer from 
next week. So I know not everybody gets their physical books, and I don't know if they'll digitally well, be available. Hopefully, I'll have more than two books to read and have a top five at least. <laughs> it looks like you will because you, you have Family Tree and Spider Man, so you already got two. Yeah, over two. There. yeah but, you, you know, already usually, got two. But usually, stuff that's not a key issues, I see it on the poll list. So maybe I'll be lucky to catch another two or three more. I'm sure you will. I'm sure you'll, there'll be more books there. And yeah, and then X Men, I'm excited to get more X Men stories because I feel like it's been really a long time since we've gotten an X Men story. And, and Marvel was so full throttle in the franchise. And then obviously, everything happened and we haven't gotten those stories. So really excited to see the whatever this X Sword event will be. Yeah, Ranger Slayer, of course. I'm excited for that. But yeah, um, that is our show. Thank you, guys. Oh, wait, is there anything that we want to talk about what's coming out for your channel or anything? Oh, right. Uh, my channel. I have Comic Uno's Best Comics of the Week for tomorrow. Other than that, I actually don't think I have a huge week for my channel. Um, we'll see with the Comic-Con stuff. Uh, obviously, go check out uh, check out my uh, sorry, I was reading a comment, but uh, go check out my work at Newsrama and DC Universe. I always have stuff coming out from over there and, and some cool interviews and stuff. So check that out. And that's it from me. I don't I don't think I have too much going on, at least in the regards of YouTube for this week. All right. Well, for me, um, I do have two things. Uh, I did pre-order. The uh, Nintendo Switch video game of, uh, and I know it's not comic related, I'm just saying what's just going on my YouTube, of uh, Paper Mario Origami King, where me and my fiance are going to It's going to be out this Friday. But oh. I'm not, well, for us, for Amazon, I probably will get it maybe Saturday or Monday, and I'm planning to do a co-op uh, walkthrough from time to time with uh, Ellie, or my fiance in there. So we're going to be doing that. And tomorrow, I'm looking forward for my Nintendo Switch to do uh, a tile that's coming out for the NES Nintendo Switch Online and two tiles for the SNES Nintendo Switch Online. So I will be doing those. Um, as far as anything else, I mean, I did post on Twitter of a Super Mario Maker 2 level I created. Yes, I created a stage but it's it was for a dashy game so maybe i'll be featured and do a reaction video of it maybe if it happens uh other than that uh thank you for those who have subscribed to my channel i do see it climbing steadily and i appreciate your subscribing and comments as always thank you all so much for that hopefully we could keep the flow going and uh thank you for coming on to the show for comic book weekly and that's the end so I'm Mike at Deuterock18, and she's Kat at Comic Let me get, those, let me get the, the banners up so we could yes. to subscribe. Don't and all forget that. to subscribe. That's the top of uh, Kat's head of our Comic Front Line. Also, don't forget to click that notification bell. We will be notified about videos we upload, as well as giving us that thumbs up. And then below Cat is all of our social medias on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Comic Frontline all across the board. Thank you all so much for coming on this Comic Book Weekly with the New York Duo Squad that you probably might see once in a lifetime. But hopefully next week we could get the whole crew uh, back for next Tuesday. Just don't forget every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time is where we do our Comic Book Weekly for you guys. And that will be all for our show. So until next week, take care, rock on, and we'll all see you guys in the comic book universe. And enjoy your new comics for comic book day tomorrow or today soon. <laughs> so take care, everybody.